Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another edition of the Rugby League World Cup podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be going into the Fijian Bati. Uh, they've, you know, they've brought out quite a strong side here um, with a few omissions from other teams not being selected. So, you know, very positive for Fijian fans. What do you think about the side so far as it shapes up, Longy? Stack team, mate. It's a stack team. Look, VG would be stoked that Meninga didn't pick Coruscant because yep. just right off the bat, he he's a genuine superstar, one of the most influential hookers in the game. Doesn't usually play any minutes these days, but probably doesn't need to for this team to do what they want to do. Um, I think they're in the right pool and I think they've got the right talent to get through to the next round. It's a question whether they can do more than that, but uh, I'm backing them. Um, look, it's been really hard to find a, a 1 to 17 team list for these guys online. So <laughs> I know yeah. you've been, you're a bit more around the Fiji team. H how do you think they line up in key positions? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be a real <laughs> battle for who's going to be uh, their outside backs at this point in time. But I do think that um, a guy who's definitely lined up at fullback uh, for Fiji in the past is Kevin Nagama. Um, he loves playing for Fiji and, and his country and um, he's done a really good job for them at the back in previous years. So I think he could line up there. The other option I think at fullback is uh, Sunia Taruva. Um, I think he we saw him play for the Panthers this year. A bit of a, a smaller guy, but he's definitely got a bit of quickness to him. Uh, and I think being in that Panthers system, um, he knows how to play some footy. But the big boys that I think uh, everyone is going to turn up and watch for Fiji are going to be the two wingers, Mike Acebo and discount Mike Acebo, Michaeli Ravalawa. Uh, oh, so. look, as much as I love that uh, as a massive Sebo tragic, Ravalawa's a few times turned up against Sebo and destroyed him. Yeah. Like, I know Sivo is the better player, but Rapalawa seems to win those head-to-head -head matchups for some reason. So, yeah, look, they're they're a good winger pairing, and then you got you know Wanga Blake in the centres there as well. And who is their other centre there? It's uh... look, uh, it's it sucks that Wanga Blake wasn't wasn't uh, selected for this World Cup, unfortunately. I don't, I'm not too, oh. too sure why that was, but um, yeah, it's really interesting that he's not uh, not in this team. So I think in the centres you'd have to see someone like Semi Valame. Uh, from mm -hmm. the Canberra Raiders, or uh, even Tane Milne didn't get selected. So there's a couple of omissions there in the outside backs for Fiji that don't make them as strong. But, you know, you got Lightyear, Mosa Drecki, you know, guys like that. And um, yep. and then also uh, a couple of other, you know, friend, familiar faces in this team. You, you know, you've got the Sims brothers as well coming back to play for Fiji. And it always it, it's always funny to me how... Sometimes they turn up and they play for Fiji. It's it, it's interesting, but Tariq and uh, and Corbin Sims have both been selected in this side, so you know they're going to provide a hell of a lot of fire. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, they always turn up. Though speaking of turning up, right. like when they play for Fiji, these boys like they play 100 miles an hour, regardless. Yeah. But they always turn up. I mean, when we talk about that forward pack too, a lot of top pedigree talent there. I think Tui Kamika Mika, he was in the Paris system for a long time. I always wanted him in the team. He looks like he would be really painful to tackle. Like just a man sort of made of rock. He always seems to leave guys wincing when they tackle him. So you got him, you got Kikau as well. Kikau can make whoever they've got on the edge look better. You know, when Kikau's mm. playing, like that Penrith edge guys like Tango um, in particular sitting outside him just look a lot better because kick out creates so many sort of indecisive you know moments for defenses and creates those those holes for the outside backs so they could be explosive my question with this team was always the spine um, I think mm. out being there helps a lot but I still do have questions so about the halves mm. I think yeah well Brandon Wakeham is definitely going to start there um, played a few games for the dogs but outside of that it's 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 looking pretty uh pretty grim in terms of uh their halves options the only one i could really say is henry rai waluai i hope i pronounced that right uh playing for mounties in the lower grades he um he can play you know hooker um in the in the centers as well as you know a bit of five eight as well um and Penny Oni, uh, 
uh, Taggy Tamua is the only other guy um, that I would also say could fit into the halves there. Plays for the Redcliffe Dolphins. And as we know, the Redcliffe Dolphins made it to the grand final of Queensland Cup this year, but um, unfortunately lost to the Devils. So um, they're going to have to, one of them is going to have to partner with Brandon Wakeham in the halves, but they're a good shot to make it through the next round. Oh, they should make it. I mean, let's let's go into that. You've got Australia, Scotland and Italy in, mm-hmm. this, in this sort of tier. Italy's team, we're going to go into that in a sec, you know, in the next video. It's not as good as it has been in previous years. And Scotland's team, they'll fight hard. But again, like on paper, this Fiji team should make it through. I just think yeah. they're a little bit lacking in that sort of creativity in particular to go to the next level. So you've got your Australian New Zealand at the top tier. You've got Samoa Tonga, England, you know, some of these other teams at the next tier. Fiji, yeah. if you threw a really good seven in there, would be in that second tier for me. But yeah, and that's not a diss on their current sevens. But you know, someone in a really influential position, maybe a top tier fullback. Nagama goes out to the outside backs. Like, yeah, they're they're just one sort of creative star away from being in that tier where they threaten um, the tier two nations and tier one nations. Like right now, yeah, they'll make it through. I think they'll go two and one. Um, and I think yeah, Australia will just Australia will dispatch them, but they should win the other two games. Yeah, I think. You know, guys like Sebo, Rabalawa, Kikau, and Corusau are good enough to carry them to at least a couple of wins there in the, in that pool B. So uh, I 100% agree with you. I don't think they'll beat Australia, um, but I do think they'll grab that second spot. What I'd love let's to have a look see. at their fixtures. Yeah. What, what are their fixtures like? Uh, they've start? got Australia first up. And then oh, what tough, the games, yeah. tough. I mean, a little bit of tune up. What I'd love to <laughs> see from Fiji here, because we're talking about. You know, Coruscant being excellent, those middle forwards being excellent, the outside backs being excellent, that in between area not being the best. You need to play creatively. Like you can't play a traditional game plan when you've got a roster like this. I want to see yeah. Coruscant linking up with Sivo. I want to see Sivo linking up with Ravalawa. I want to see a bit of a different style of play. I remember we used to do it a lot at Parramatta with Semi Raj Raja back in the day. Like he would be on the left wing, but he would appear on the right side on scrum plays. Um, and link up with his opposite winger. He'd, he'd sort of appear everywhere. So if I'm Fiji, I'm thinking, how do I get the ball into Sivo's hands? Do I get the ball in Coruscant's um, hands? He's going to get it. But, you know, kick out in places where they're not game planned for. Because if I'm an opposition team and these guys just play a traditional style and everything goes through Wakeham, I'm just game planning for the big wingers, sending defense sliding out. And I'm just yeah. two guys <laughs> kick out. But other than that, you don't have to think about it too much. Like, this is where who's who's the coach for Fiji? I don't even know who the coach is, but we'll find out. I'm going to Google that right now. Fijian coach. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, no, I, I do agree with you. If they play a very kind of block play style, I mean, it's not very Fiji of them to do that. I mean, you look at the way that their rugby seven side plays; it's it's the best in the world, and I think they need to adopt mm-hmm. a very similar a similar way of playing, you know, maybe give up a few points, but go out and score some, you know, and have the mentality of we're going to score more points than you, not we're going to try and defend you into the ground um, because they're not that team. And if they have the right attitude and the right, um, I, guess, I guess the right game plan, as you're saying, that it can definitely um, turn in their favour for a few fixtures, maybe not against some of the bigger teams, but um, they could definitely produce an upset or two. No, I totally agree with that. I'm just looking at the coach here. I think it's mm-hmm. Joe Deku- Dekui Tonga. Joe Dekui Tonga. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know him. He's got some playing experience with the Panthers and the Sheffield Eagles mm-hmm. uh, back in the okay. 90s. <laughs> some coach <laughs> experience just with Fiji. Um, pretty good record, though. So, let's see. So, 2007-2008 three wins, two losses, 2011, 2012, one and one. Okay. 2020 onwards, they haven't played too much recently. They haven't been the best in the warm-up games to this World Cup, but it doesn't really mean too much. Um, but he's got some experience basically with this team. So I think he's going to understand what they need to do. Um, I think he's he's been there, done that. So hopefully we do see a bit of that Fijian influence, um, particularly yeah. Seven's influence in style of play, because they could be the best team to watch in the tournament. So. In terms of prediction, then to wind this one down, you're saying two and one 
pretty straightforward. They're going to win the games meant to win, lose the ones meant to lose. No, I think they, I call an upset. I think they're going to lose to Italy. Wow. Big, big. Uh, it's, uh, I just don't, I don't see them, I don't see them gelling too much together. They've lost a few, you know, players who would normally play for this for this team. And it's it's looking like a bit of a thinner um, thing for Fiji. But their best player is clearly Coruscant and, you know, he might carry them to a couple of tries, but I think I think Italy get get the win here. I'm sniffing I'm sniffing an upset. Heard it here for her first folks. Italy to beat Fiji. I personally reckon you give the ball to Sivo <laughs> anywhere within the half of the field of the try line. <laughs> There's no Italy yeah, player look, who's gonna stand in front of him. Any like, for that. Yeah, you're I think you're thinking about this and realizing <laughs> it's it's not, not, it's not no, going to happen, no, mate. There's no strangers making bets. That... <laughs> uh, what about we make a proper bet with this? Um, I'm trying to think of a good bet here. How, how about a case of years, mate? And like, you, they can be your upset. I'll pick a silly upset as well. All right, okay. Yeah, so, uh, mine is, my, my, I'll go with BG to lose to Italy. Yeah. All right, nice. Look, I'm going to have to think about it. I probably prefer pool C or D for my one. So when we get to those, I'll choose someone. A little less ridiculous than Italy losing the Fiji. Yeah, <laughs> you, you wait for me to do the stupid one, and then you, and then you come in. Oh yeah, I think Australia is going to update uh, upset Fiji. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, beauty, mate. Well, look, that's Fiji. Everyone uh, should get through to the next round, according to me. Probably won't, according to Miles. Uh, but yeah, look. Next up, we're going to go through Scotland and Italy in a single video. If you haven't caught England, Samoa, the France and Greece video, or the Australia video as well. They'll be in the suggested videos too. Otherwise, we'll see you soon.